All right, guys, we're here with Drainus, a fellow streamer coming in from Russia, also a pro player. So tell us a bit about yourself. What do you do these days? And uh, where did you, how did you come into PUBG at the first place? So actually, it's a pretty long story, it's crazy. You should, we have time, let's go. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I've been a PUBG streamer for almost like two years already. And uh, yeah, definitely it was a like blow up when it came out because yeah, yeah everybody in, in Russia at least, uh, like everybody started playing it, like pro players from Counter Strike, from from Dota, from Hearthstone, pretty much every game. So and that time, like, no one was really good at the game, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I know for whatever reason, I become I become like real good at the game, like real fast. So that's why that's how my career started. Yeah. It's it was like long before um, long before PUBG Esports like uh, has become a, th a thing. Okay, so you were a streamer at the start. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, I wasn't even a streamer. I was just like found out a game, a new game that was actually so enjoyable to play, even though it was really really laggy, yes. buggy, and you know back then it was so bad. Like, yes, but went, everyone loved it, right? Yeah, everyone yeah. loved it. Yeah, and I did as well. So. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how it started. And then um, uh, esports scene has become like start, has start, started to become like developing, started developing. Yeah, and uh, you know I joined the Wanger. Like there was an event called Gamescom, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumino, Onuktiv, and many other like a couple of more guys from Russia went there, and they took like second place at the event. And then they went back, they went back and uh, realized that they gotta like form a real team, like you know. The, which is capable of winning, winning like uh, upcoming tournaments and stuff. Because there were many like uh, rumors that PUBG is gonna be a thing. Like like, mm -hmm. like ESL, you know, uh, created a Twitter account. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah quite a lot of things like that. And uh, we formed a team, uh, which is which was mostly known as a Vanguard. Mm -hmm. It was also a Kazakhstan organization. It was me, Mumino, Kin, and uh, Onuktiv. We won we won a couple of uh, online qualifiers there. So I mean, I didn't expect anything uh, from it honestly. It's just like playing with friends, with like good people, having fun. Yeah. But it turned out like a real good like real good project. So we were winning qualifiers. Uh, we were supposed to go to Oakland as well, uh, but unfortunately we we come from CIS and sometimes it's pretty hard to get visas. Yes, that's so, a, that is a very common issue it seems. Yeah. And the thing is that even though I travel like all over the world, it's still really, really hard. So we, we had to miss it. Yeah. Uh, but then we were super angry, we couldn't go. And we won another, uh, not one, but we, we probably took third place on uh, ESL, I am Katowice qualifiers. We went there and won. Mm -hmm. So that was probably like the best memory for my career. And it's just like, even though it was like eight games, I mean, it sounds like kind of a joke right now when yeah. you have all this like PEL, yeah. 26 games, two months in Berlin and stuff. Yeah. But back then it was like something really, really special. Uh, so then, uh, I don't know, just uh, uh, in Russia, like it's uh, for players, and for, for everyone who's involved in esports and like high level gameplay in any game. It's uh, it's a dream to join Navi, either Navi or Virtus Pro. Mm -hmm. like Navi is more like Ukrainian organization. Virtus Pro is more like yeah. uh, domestic, like Russian yes. one. So we, um, we heard like rumors that Navi are going to form a roster, and obviously I was I'm a, like super ambitious person, and uh, I just couldn't miss the chance. So yeah, uh, thanks to Awanger, we managed to do a smooth transition. So I talked to a team and we spoken with them and everything was like uh, really good, like it was smooth, no like bad emotion, like yeah. bad like relationships or anything. So yeah, then I joined Navi, it was, it was like the first season of GLL mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't even play online, I just joined them and, and go straight to Bucharest and we actually won the Bucharest as well. So you, you hit the right timing with uh, joining Oh yeah, Navi. like that's true, that's true. So, yeah, that's we, we were doing really good. Like we were winning like online stuff, like tournaments, mm -hmm. doing pretty good in the leagues. But at some point, you know, it's esports. We just got tired of each other, kind of like. Yeah. Uh, but it's like nothing bad, you know. It just happens to everyone in, in the team sometimes. It's like we we are pretty good friends with the guys still. So yeah, I just kind of 
uh, quit at some point, like Uber joined Face, I, I, I went to streaming. So yeah, so basically that's the story and I'm a streamer, I'm a PUBG streamer still and honestly I'm enjoying it so much because yeah, I had to sacrifice quite a lot like um, to be to be an esports player and yeah. uh, it feels uh, pretty damn good to, yeah. to be a streamer right now. So tell me about the differences between being a pro player and a pro streamer. I mean, uh, it's just if you're a, pro, a pro player, you just you're a pro player and that's it. Like you cannot have like normal life, you know, kind of. It's just for me. For for different people, it might be like different. Oh uh, well, but, it's probably like that yeah. for all the top level pros. I mean, you them. have to uh, like be top level at your mental, like have like good mental state. Like you have to have to get like good sleeping schedule, all this stuff, you know, just. Uh, you have to be good at communication with the teams. It's like so many stuff you have to pay yeah. attention. If you like want to succeed in, in uh, esports, especially in PUBG, you got to sacrifice everything to make it. Like and yeah. at some point, I realized I'm almost 25 right right now. So, I mean, I realized that I just can't do it like anymore, especially yeah. with the PL coming in and you know yes. all this like uh, Berlin like stuff and moving out for yeah. like six yeah, exactly. months. It or was something. like too hard, and uh, honestly. I just realized that it's not worth compared to streaming. Mm -hmm. Like it's not as stressful, uh, and yeah, it's kind of more enjoyable, honestly. Yeah, and also I guess you don't have the responsibility towards your teammates they're playing with, because let's say you're slacking, you're kind of destroying the chances for the rest of the team, not just for yeah. yourselves, right? Yeah. So yeah, I guess that also comes. Into yeah, for play. me it was at some point it was pretty hard to. Know, keep this level of like uh, dedication and stuff mm -hmm. because I was also like distracted by streaming and you know all these opportunities I had so I just like uh, put my attention into streaming yeah as someone that played the Navi what do you think of the new Navi lineup oh the new Navi lineup uh, so the, uh, let's start from the beginning so at some point people have have grown like really really good at PUBG mm -hmm. so yeah and uh, these guys, they, no one really knew about them. So there was some uh, small uh, league run by, by Unique in Russia. So it was called, uh, yeah, pretty much Unique League. And uh, I mean, we, the, back then we started to see all these new nicknames, Bestelage, Dozy, like Xenia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a really long like run for them before they joined the Navi. Before the, like, it was Jokers in the first uh, PL phase. And they just, uh, from tournament to tournament, they were performing so good that, you know, just Navi just couldn't resist, I guess. And, yeah. you know, their previous roster wasn't doing as good. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would say, like, this lineup probably the best out of all lineups. Uh, because the guys are so, like, biggest tryhards. They, they are, like, dedicate all, like, all of them to, to, towards, like, winning and stuff. They, mm -hmm. hold, they all have this, like, great mentality of winning. They you cannot really, you know, make them upset or something. They just, I mean, fight till the very last match. So, yeah, and they're all like really talented. So I believe this lineup is really, really strong. That's great. That's great. Well, they kind of picked out the best players out of all the Russian teams in phase one of PL, basically, right? Yeah. The Dozy and uh, Best Lot, they were playing in separate teams. And yeah. now they all came under a Navi. The thing is that like, Face it, uh, face it was really popular in Russia at some point. It's still pretty popular. Yeah. I mean, PUBG, Face it, and Navi, Best Watch, and uh, Aduzi, they uh, they were used to play with each other so much. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like random players. Okay, you know? so, so they, knew so each they other really definitely well. knew about yeah. each other. All right. But I think at some point Navi just like gone mad because you know they were get not getting any results and they just checked the stat statistics, got the players. Yeah, and, the and it worked out. The, the funny things. The funny thing is, that, yeah, that it's working out for now, but yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, I mean, last day of of PL2, PL phase two, I mean, it was all within a few points, so they could have easily won as well. And then yeah, it will be... Yeah, that's also true. That yeah. was anyone's game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what do you think is the best thing that happened to you overall uh, when it comes to PUBG? Oh, that's a pretty easy question, uh, Sprezia. It's obviously my beautiful girlfriend, uh, Smarodinova, who ah. also plays PUBG with me. We play all the PUBG Twitch rivals together. Mm -hmm. And she actually often carries me to victory. Like, yeah? Yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty good. 
So the history of that was, I just, you know, at some point I was just browsing the uh, Twitch page, uh, PUBG Twitch page, and I saw some girl, like, re really, like, good looking one, let's be honest, and I opened her Twitch and just subbed, and I mean, since then started chatting with her or something, and then, uh, I mean, I was lucky to have her in the same city as me, I live mm -hmm. in St. Petersburg, it's like European part of Russia, and we met, and yeah. So the rest is history. That's the history, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, since uh, then we've been like together for 1.5 years already. Okay, so guys, now you know what to do if you're looking for uh, looking for a GF. Yeah, I would never imagine that it, such would happen to me, yeah. but it did, and honestly, I feel only good about that. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's great. It's just good. History. So basically, all you have to do is sub to the channel, and uh, that's it. That's all you have to do. I mean, it worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the prime. <laughs> So what are the most popular games in Russia currently? So definitely the most popular games are Dota 2 and Counter-Strike. And if you like uh, don't play Counter-Strike and Dota 2 professionally, you're like, let's be honest, you're considered like tier five, tier six, like something <laughs> like that. I mean, it's just like something special about the region. People just play Dota and Counter-Strike. Yeah. And especially Dota. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, when PUBG blew up, it was interesting for everyone to see if it's gonna grow as a real esport. But there were like Dota 2 like casters, players who actually like, you know, brought brought up this uh, RNG thing, you know, into the discussion. So people kind of like didn't really see PUBG as, a, as an esport, as many other people do right now because of this RNG or the circles yes. and stuff. So yeah. But honestly, I didn't care. Like, about why would I care? I mean, at some point, it was really, really big, and it was a it was enjoyable to play. So, yeah. but yeah, like Counter Strike and Dota 2, are basically uh, the games to go if you're a CIS player. But is PUBG the third biggest game? Mm, it's or is it League of Legends? It's probably not League of Legends. I think it's no? Hearthstone even. Hearthstone. Oh, yeah, okay. Like that. I mean, yeah. But didn't League of Legends have a period where it was pretty uh, big with uh, Gambit Gaming and Moscow 5 and stuff like that? At some point, probably yes, but it was never as big as Dota. Like, okay. I don't know why it's like that, mm -hmm. because it's really weird you know, for me. People don't play Fortnite, people don't play League, and uh, yeah, but they, I mean, they, they watch PUBG kind of. Like, yeah. I mean, it's uh, kind of like um, not that, not that many people anymore, but because of the st PUBG stagnating. Uh, yeah, situation, but still, like people prefer PUBG or Fortnite, and it's like pretty surprising for me, honestly. Yeah, I guess uh, Russia is one of the few countries or regions where uh, PUBG is more popular than Fortnite. For example, I guess Turkey and uh, Southeast Asia. Asia just doesn't care too much about Fortnite, it seems. But other than that, everyone else is just playing Fortnite. Yeah, and things that like people don't really like this cartoon style like uh, games. You know, I that's don't know, not popular in Russia. Yeah, right? I don't know why. Like it's so mm -hmm. weird. And uh, for uh, even Apex, I mean, people people were saying that it's like some kind of shit game. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's so weird. Even though Apex was really good when it came out as well. And also, it's free. Yeah, it's free. I mean, PUBG is a buggy, laggy, and it's a pretty stressful game. Let's be honest. Yeah. And, yeah, but I know that's how it is. Uh, it's just a theme, I guess, that works in in Russia really well and some other places. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So one of the reasons why we have you here today on the interview is because I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect in between uh, the Russian community and the EU or NA community in general. Um, we don't get to interact that much. Um, so what do you think of the situation in between, let's say, the eSport teams, uh, Russian eSport teams versus EU teams? How do they get along? Like, is there communication in between them? Now, now there's some Russian players playing in, for example, FaZe. We have Uba yeah. playing in FaZe. How, did, how do you think that happened? I mean, uh, for Uba, he's just insanely good. He's probably one of the best players in the world since he also speaks English, yeah. which is almost like, the biggest issue for for like you know Russian slash uh, international communication. Yeah. Things that like most players they um, don't really speak good English. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you so think that's the main thing that yeah. just doesn't allow people to play in, in an EU team? Yeah, that's probably it. But you know, like um, Russian players, like and any European pl players at least at PUBG, they really getting along really well. Mm -hmm. like, 
Uh, I mean, yes, like a couple of days ago, we played uh, some Russian card games with James as well. Yeah. And it was really fun. Like, I mean, even though they don't talk uh, real good English, it's yeah. still, I mean, they're pretty easygoing, communicative. So it's not yeah. like, you know, they're not aggressive at all or something. So it's pretty a good environment, at least yeah. uh, between uh, CIS and uh, European uh, players uh, in PUBG. I'm pretty sure it's like this in uh, every every other game. So, and, you know, like, uh, there are, as a streamer, I can say that there are, like, Russian viewers who are just get inspired by such personalities as Ibiza, like Faz and many other players and you know there are quite a lot of Russian viewers in the uh, European streams also. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you know we just completely separated or something. Of course. So yeah many people follow all the like uh, PUBG stars uh, yeah. regardless of their like you know country or anything like yeah, that. Yeah of course. So and yeah that's, that's a good thing like but you know I, I hope that more and more like people more and more players will uh, you know we just <laughs> learn english pretty much because it just you know kind of g- gets you close to the community yeah and it's a to my mind is a very good thing yeah so i have an interesting question so what would be your pro tip on how to deal with let's say you're playing dota and you get a lot of russians in the game how would you approach uh, like conversation with a lot of Russian players in order to win the game and have a, the easiest time if they start like accusing you for being bad what, what would you do you just leave you just leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's be honest like Dota and Counter-Strike players from Russia they're the worst I mean that's probably that was probably the reason because I quit Dota at some point mm-hmm. I was not as bad uh, I mean as well but I just couldn't stand like random matchmaking that I was getting matched up with all this like, I mean, kind of super aggressive people from CIS. It's, it could be only, it wouldn't be only Russians, say like, just CIS. Yeah, so. um, when I say Russian, I mean, I mean CIS yeah, in yeah, general, yeah. 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 So, I don't know, like, I've, I just started raging as well because it, it was so hard to, to communicate. It's like a team game as well, like yes. PUBG, so. I mean, and since then it was so hard for me to play random matchmaking, but I mean, if I would have to give a tip. I mean, just uh, go into the game, into the other game, and say something like "Privet comrades" or something like that. And, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> Learn I mean, a few Russian so words and just uh, oh, yeah. use them wisely. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody knows like t- the two words. I'm not going to pronounce it. Yes, yes, yes. Rude, yes. But yeah, just it's also a good idea. But I mean, it's so hard for me as well. So I just it's probably the first thing that came into my. I mind. guess it depends a lot on the game. Like like you said, the hardcore communities of the games that have been around for. 10, 20 years, I guess uh, I guess you cannot change them or control them that much, but uh, I guess the new games and new people coming in, they're, they're not as hardcore in, in a certain way. Yeah, that's so. true. And things that, especially in Dota, it's like super competitive game. Yeah. And in Russia, everybody thinks if you play like 2K MMR or something, they think they're like Dendius or like, I don't know, Miracle. <laughs> I mean, it, and everybody's r- like around is, is trash. Like, I mean, is it's the only reason holding them back from being like esports like yeah. recordsman or something like yeah. that. But at the end of the day, Funny. you also get Virtus Pro in the last year or two, they, they won like half of the tournaments there. So there's, there's potential and there's uh, people that actually work together. And when that joins together, you just get the best team in the world. So it's yeah, obviously, I mean, the yes. skill is there. It's just the, the coordination communication. Exactly. Right? It's, it's mostly all these problems are confided in the like random matchmaking environment. But when it obviously comes up uh, as a team to a team, like it just all disappears pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, there. Are, but uh, if you think about it, like CIS teams and players, they're also like kind of associated with raging and like aggressive uh, behavior. Mm-hmm. If you rem- remember, like Navi Counter Strike, when Simple just joined them. It was pretty hard for them, like a couple of psychologists were working with them. So yeah. it's pretty hard to find team chemistry because I would think like CIS players, especially top tier, they're, they're really ambitious and sometimes they can be hard to like deal with. Mm-hmm. But once you succeed in that, it becomes really, really good. Okay, from what you've told me the other day, you're also a big fan of World of Warcraft. Oh yeah. So what are your plans for uh, World of Warcraft Classic? Oh, we probably, like, everybody's going to try hard it for, like, a month or something, I'm pretty sure. I used to play World of Warcraft for, like, 10 years or something. I even was close to being an esports player in World of Warcraft. I qualified for 
Prague LAN event or something. And yeah, it was it was it was fun, but not as fun as PUBG because World of Warcraft esports is pretty trash. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. And um, well, but the game itself is, I mean, it's it's really good, and yeah, its history is like I don't know, like yeah. it gave me so many good emotions when I was like young yeah. and stuff. But do you think it's it's the best game ever made? Mm, I mean, I think at some point there was a period of MMO like MMO era I would mm -hmm. say where MMOs were really popular when internet wasn't you know just started pretty much yeah so um, the social aspect was really really strong in these games yes but now it's I mean it's kind of fading let's be honest yes so yeah back then like World of Warcraft was so fun to play uh, just insane and yeah. uh, considering a classic uh, yeah I'm probably gonna try hard it and also my girl is playing like a priest so it's a good combo you know i'm gonna level a warrior we're gonna like warrior priest perfect oh yeah oh yeah you got lucky there <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true uh but i don't think it's gonna last for long like mm -hmm. you know, like when it's hyped up it's so cool to play because there's so many people world pvp and stuff yeah. but it just i don't see it as a long-term streaming game you know like yes it, it's definitely not good for streaming but it's it's good you know to play two hours before going to bed mm -hmm. so that's what it's gonna be for me probably but yeah it's still gonna be really fun yeah i think i have the same plan same plan you're gonna play on eu oh yeah i'm gonna play on we EU. should definitely play together then. <laughs> <laughs> sure you're gonna play art uh, horde yeah probably alliance Oh yeah, me too. I think yeah, because like as a warrior, you, ne you, ne you need to be a gnome. You need to be, otherwise you're gonna like punch your monitor at some point. Yeah, yeah. I'll play a rogue, most likely human rogue or something like that. Human rogue. Yeah, that's Seriously. like PVE tryhard. Oh PVE. Yeah. I mean, PvE. I, I'm honestly probably more into PvP, but we'll see. I don't know. I didn't choose the race yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, guys, that'll be it. I'd like to thank Adrenus for the interview. Thank you, Sprizy. It was a pleasure. Yeah, so you can follow Janus on Twitch, uh, Twitch TV slash Janus on Twitter, and I'll leave the links in the description below. See you all, guys. Thank you very much. See ya. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't miss the live action on my stream at Twitch TV slash Breezy. See you in the next video. Please.